glory to the newborn king. Just a little over two weeks. Be two weeks from tomorrow, right? Yeah, that used to be the longest two weeks. Did any of, for any of you when you were about 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, especially when you were expecting something, right? Yeah, I mean, it seemed like it took forever. Now, as an adult, it seemed like, man, I only got two weeks, right? But for kids, you ask a child, like, man, it's two more weeks before Christmas. I remember one year, uh, I, I, I can remember clearly, I was, I was 13 years old. And uh, the thing back then in that day, some of y'all may not know about this. I think they call them, uh, I'll tell you what they call them now. But back in the day, they were called go-karts. And uh, I, I wanted me one. I mean, because everybody seemed like everybody in the neighborhood had a go-kart. And I had, I had my go-kart on my Christmas list. And I gave my daddy a picture of my go-kart. And, and uh, yeah, that, 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 that I wanted. And, my, you know, my dad was a straight-up kind of guy. Let's see, did y'all get my, yeah, that's, that's the picture of the one I wanted right there. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, they call those what now? Recreational vehicles? Yeah, they don't suit them up now, you know. But back in the day, I think one cost about three, four, maybe $500 for a real souped up one, right? And I, I, I remember just saying, Dad, that's what I want. That's what my dad said, you're not getting it. Plain and simple, you're not getting it. I said, but Dad, everybody going to want one and I can drive it. You know, I can handle that. He said, no, sir, you're not getting it. And I mean, I just, I was mad. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I was upset. Uh, because I felt that, you know, I could handle that. Anybody else felt like you were ready for something? And, and, and they just, just didn't come. Thank, thank you, Walter. A few, few folks in here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. And so um, Christmas came that year, you know. I run downstairs. I said, I know he just kidding me. I just kidding me. Went outside and looked. No gold car. None whatsoever. No, that ain't what I got. So I made me one. I took matters into my own hands. I wasn't going to wait on what my father said I couldn't have now. Are y'all walking with me? Yeah, and, and so that's where we find Abraham and Sarah uh, in our lesson text today. Delayed, uh, but never late. Delayed, but never late. Open your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Genesis. That should be an easy book to find. And I want you to walk on over. And we're going we're gonna to do a little Bible study to, to really appreciate this lesson because I, I, don't, I don't think Abraham and Sarah get a good rap sometimes. Uh, when we find ourselves um, uh, more like them than we care to believe, or they are more like us than we care to believe. Uh, let's go to chapter 17. And drop down to verse 15. And I'll come from the NIV. And there we find these words God also said to Abraham as for you as for Sarai your wife you are no longer to call her Sarai her name will be Sarah I will bless her and will surely give you a son from her and I will bless her to be mother of nations and kings of people will come from her now, some of you may or may not have heard the story, but uh, Abram and Sarah is really when we can actually start marking historical time. When you read chapters 1 through 11 of the Bible, uh, historians and Bible scholars call that prehistory. And what that means is that it's really hard to date that or give it any actual time period when those things occur. We know that they occurred, uh, but there's no calendar we can put those on. Does that make sense? You know how <clears throat> you can say 2000 BC, 3000 BC? And this is just an aside. You know, it just blows my mind sometimes when, when the uh, um, 
you watch like National Geographic and they show you all this prehistoric stuff and they say this happened 10 million years ago, you know, and, and, and things of that nature. But they really can't go that far back in time. Are, are you with me here? And, and so the first 11 chapters of, of Genesis is prehistory. We know they happen. And how do we know they happen? Because God said they happen. Are, are y'all with me that far? But when they exactly happen, we do not know. But when you get to chapter 12, and from that point on, we can pretty much start dating time. And this is where I want us to do a little bit of our, our, our background. Now, our lesson today is based on we're still doing, you know, this, this Advent period, this time of waiting and, and how we deal with waiting. Um, and, and we're going to look at one of the housewives that is going to be in the play uh, this coming Saturday and Friday. Uh, and, and one of them is Sarah. And Sarah uh, had a difficult lot uh, starting out. If you look at Genesis, I believe it's the 11th chapter. And you go down to verse 30, it starts talking about uh, uh, Abraham and, and Terah and, and Lot and Aaron and uh, Haran. And, and if you look at verse 30, it tells us right there, just a small little statement, that Sarah was barren and without child. Do you see that? Now, now, now for, for, for a woman in that day, and even in this day, um, it's one thing not to want to have children right? It's one thing to say you don't want them and can have them, but it's another thing to want them and cannot have them. And in that society, uh, a woman that did not have children, especially what? Sons. The sons were their social security. We got social security now? Yeah, back in the day, a son was the social security. He, he was the one that when the father died that would be responsible to make certain that mama was taken care of. Isn't that right, brothers? We're going to make certain moms going to be all right? It, there, there's, something, there's something inherently in us, uh, th that maternal instinct, that if mama needs something, uh, she, mama can count on them boys with some of them. Yeah, yeah, there's always a knucklehead in the group, but, but, but isn't that true? There's always, I mean, you know, there's a knucklehead. There's, but, but, but for the most part, in that society, men, uh, boys, were expected to take care of the mothers. That was the Social Security. And so for her not to have a son, regardless of how good her husband is to her, in most of those age, time periods, the men were much older than the women. So they were surely to die first. Are, are y'all walking with me? So for her not to have a child of her own put her in a precarious position. And, and so and when you look at chapter 11 there, it tells us right off the bat, just a small little phrase, that she's without child. And then when you walk over to chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through 3, uh, and, and especially in, I think it's verse 4, in 12, 4, that tells us that Abram is, and that's his name at that time, is 75 years old. Am I right? Verse 4, he says he's 75, right? And, and, but verses 1 through 3 is where God comes to him and tells him, bro, I want you to quit your job. I want you to leave your family. I want you to leave your people. And I want you to go to a land that I'm going to show you uh, that I want you to go to. Now, that's, that's the message you're going to get tonight from God. Now, how many are you going to just call in tomorrow and say, God said. <laughs> no, here's what you might say. God said, I need a day off. Some of you might do that, right? And just take a day off. It, come on, y'all call it a sick day, right? Yeah, yeah you're sick and tired of work, right? And, and, but, but how many of us would really take God at his word, just walk away from everything, your career, uh, all of your family, and just leave and go to a place where you don't even know where God is taking. He just tells you to go. How many is going? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, 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 that's exactly. And see, this is some herbology. I can't find this anywhere in Scripture, but this is some herbology. I believe there were other folks that God was telling to do the same thing. Abraham was the only one that responded. See, and just like a room full of us, see, God is talking to you all the time. The question is, are you responding? All right? When, when you hear it. Now, here's what we respond to when we hear what we want to hear. 
from God. Oh, yeah, God, I've been waiting for that one. I've been, yeah. <laughs> but when it's one of those that seems so far-fetched, here's what we say. Well, I got to pray some more on that. Isn't that what we do? We, we, we got to hear something different because God asked you to do some crazy stuff. Look at that. Isn't that just some crazy stuff? Just to leave everything? Now, here's the thing. He has started to build up a little wealth uh, from his daddy and all of that because each generation passed it on. And here's another theological thing that I can't find proof on, uh, but I think it's so. And I, I, I got to look at it. It's in chapter 11. I think it might be verse uh, 1, but let me just look at it for certain. See, when I read the Bible, I, I just, it's just it's all kinds of stuff just jump out at me. Yeah, it's verse 27. Um, I believe Abram was a triplet. And this is just a little sidebar. I just sometimes just like to show you that. Because it says here, uh, we'll look at verse 26. It says, after Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abram, Nahar, and Haran. And usually it says he begot, begot, begot when they do one after another. But that's very rarely you see all three of them together. But that's just a little sidebar. But anyway, um, mo moving right along. Uh, so here's now uh, Sarah. Uh, she's barren. And Abraham gets this promise from God uh, that he's going to have a, a bunch of children. He's going to be blessed by uh, God and, and, and nations and, and just uh, all this great grandiose stuff. That sounds really good now, right? Doesn't that sound great if God told you that? So if God told you that, when you want God to start doing it? Yeah, I mean, since he's God, right? here, no need for him to wait, right? Is there any need for God to wait if he's God? Can't he just do it like right now? I mean, he created the world in seven days. Surely, uh, if he's going to give me, look at all that great stuff that God says in, in chapter 12. He says, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and your name, uh, your, your name will be great, right? And, and you will be a blessing, and I will bless those who will bless you, and I'll curse those who will curse you. Oh, man, that sounds great. And so then, but life starts happening. And Abram, he, if you look at verse number four, how old is he in chapter 12, verse four? How old is he? 75. Now, at 75, most of us figure it's time for me to sit down, Pastor. I done done all I need to do. You know, it's time for somebody else to take over. Now, you know, I've been on this journey a long time. <laughs> Some of you start saying that at 40. Pastor, I've been doing this. <laughs> Pastor, I've been doing this for a long time. been doing it for two months. I've been doing it a long time. Time for me to sit down and somebody else to take over. <laughs> but, but watch this now. He's 75 years old. And, and, and back in those days, that was still considered a young man because uh, his daddy didn't have him till he was about 70. Everybody here that's seven and above, raise your hand. Come on. Yeah, yeah, y'all about to have some children. Not grandchildren now. Y'all still, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know you may have a little snow on the top and the furnace ain't what it used to be, but... Uh, <laughs> But, <laughs> but, 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 but watch this now. Walk, walk with me, y'all. Walk with me here now. Now, now, now. So, so, so in, in chapter 12 and 13, life starts to happen. Now, another little sidebar, another little Bible nugget. Uh, uh, Abram and Sarah were really half brothers and sisters, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, back in the day, you could do that. Or if you're from South Carolina, you could still do that. <laughs> Oh, they got that on stream. Cut out all our South Carolina viewers. <laughs> we are having techno technical difficulties in South Carolina. But, but <laughs> Don't shoot me, Sister Faggot. I know that. But, but, but anyway, 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 anyway. Brother, forget what you put in my tea, man. Huh? Hmm? Ah, it's good, too. But, but in chapter 13, now here, now check this out. God has just told him in chapter 12 the great things he's going to do for him, right? And God tells us all that, right? But then we run into life and some stumbling blocks and we see some challenges. What do we normally do when we see challenges that we don't have answers for? We start trying to figure out how to answer them, right? We try to figure out a way around them. Now, here's the situation. His life is on the line um, he runs into these guys, and uh, they see him, and they see Sarah. Now, Sarah, now, put a pen, write this down. She's 65 and good-looking. Yeah, she's a good-looking woman at 65. All my ladies that's 65 and above, raise your hand. 
See, y'all, y'all good looking, just like Sarah. Yeah, just like Sarah. Yeah, now see, yeah, yeah, yeah y'all about to do some producing too. Watch this now. <laughs> so, 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 check this out. So, so, I, look, I tell you, you don't have to watch TV. This stuff is right. You don't, y- y'all don't, y'all can cut those TVs off and just read your Bible. Y'all see some good stuff. So here she is now. She's 65, he's 75, and he runs into, he goes to Egypt, and, 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 and uh, they're thinking about killing him if that's his woman and taking her because she looks good. And so he pimps his wife. Now, really, he says, no, uh, that's my sister. Yeah, because if, he, if that's his sister, they're not going to kill him. But he was willing to give them to her as long as he could save his hide. Now, look at this. God had already told him what great things he was going to do for him. But see here, when God tells us great things that are going to happen, we think it's just going to be smooth sailing. But when some rough spots come, we try to figure a way around the rough spots. Are, are y'all walking with me here? And, and because we don't like difficulties. We don't like challenges. We feel that we're believers that God should just do everything real smooth and easy like. Is that not correct? Now watch this now. So flip on over and, 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 and you get on to, to, to page, uh, page uh, chapter 16, right? And, and this is where it starts to get sort of juicy now. Now, now. When you get to page chapter 16, here's what's happening. Uh, how was Abraham when we started this promise? 75, all right. When, by the time you get to chapter 16, well, really, when you get to chapter 15, God visits him again. Uh, uh, look at chapter 15, verses 1 through uh, 4 again, right? He, he, God says to him uh, that he's going to bless him. He says, do not be afraid because God delivered him out of that situation and delivered him from Lot. He says, I'm your shield. You are very great. But Abram said, oh, sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? See, now he doesn't have any children either. And so he thinks that's one of his servants is going to be who he's going to have to turn his possessions over to. And, and, and that was another one of those uh, uh, culture things that you did. If you had a very good servant who took care of you, you're going to take care of them. That's called employee employer. That's a, some benefits. How many got employee benefits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you, even if you're working, you got them called Social Security. Some of it's not going to be there. They messing with that stuff, right? But, but don't even worry about that. Don't worry about that. Watch this now. And, and so, so that's what happens there. Now, now, walk with me a little bit farther. Now, going on over to chapter 16. Now, this is where it gets juicy. Now, at the very top of 16, it says, Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. They both get nervous. She doesn't have any children. He doesn't have any children. And another custom was to get your handmaid. And this is this girl they picked up when they were down in Egypt. Yeah, 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 yeah. The sister they picked up that she was down in Egypt. And, and she was walking around the house. She was a little PYT. Y'all know what that is, right? Come on, come, come, come on, Ryan. What's that, bro? Yeah, pretty young thing. He got one sitting next to him. He got a pretty young thing, pretty young thing. And, and so, I, just read your Bible sometimes. Stop trying to read with all these perfect lenses and stuff and, and read it for what it is. And so, so Sarah gets nervous and figured that now God made the promise uh, 10 years ago. Do you hear what I just said? So how many have waited for something for 10 years God hadn't showed up? Waiting for your marriage to get better. Waiting for your job to get better. Wait, wait for your health to get better. Wait for your relationship to get better. Wait to have children. Wait for a whole lot of things that you've just been waiting on and God hadn't shown up. So we start trying to fix it. Y'all remember my go-kart picture? I wanted the first one. But my daddy said I couldn't have one. So I went out and got some lumber and some lawnmower wheels and a lawnmower engine. Forgot to put brakes on it. <laughs> Just a small technicality. Just a small technicality. Yeah, that's when them shoes come in here. Yeah, no brakes whatsoever. See that little piece of wood right there? It was supposed to be the string broke. Pop. I'm going straight down here just like that. No brakes. took matters into my own hands. You know what happens when you take matters into your own hands? You make matters worse. And this is what she did. Uh, he, 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 uh, this verse against me is really the latter part of uh, verse number three. Abram agreed with what Sarah said. 
That's the latter part of verse 2. Look what, So Abram, after been living in Canaan 10 years, you see that? 10 years he'd been living there. He took, he took his Egyptian handmaid and slept with her, and she conceived. So see, it's been 10 years. God told him that back in chapter 12. We're now at chapter 16. It's been 10 years, and, and God hadn't shown up. Anybody in here waiting on God to show up? Been a long time, six weeks. <laughs> six months, six years. Hmm. How about 10? Are y'all walking with me? Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm talking about the message that God had, I'm sorry, uh, for, for Sarah's future. That's my first thing, I'm, for, I'm sorry. Yeah. So now, flip on over to chapter 17. We're getting ready to get to the lesson text now. We're getting ready to go deep. It's not gonna be long, but we're gonna go deep. Look at the top of chapter 17, verse 1. When Abram was 99 years old. How many years since the promise? He's 75, 99. 24, 24 years. He's got a young son now. He's been playing with Ishmael. He thinks God, is, he's got it right now. See, even when we've done wrong, it can seem right. He's got him a boy. You know, little Ishmael running around the house. He figured Ishmael is it, and he's got everything he needs. And God shows up and said, no, bro, that's not it. Are y'all walking with me? So God tells him the covenant again. And this time he changes his name. But in verse 15, this is the only place in the Bible. I've kept looking at it. I might be wrong. I, I've read through it uh, several dozen times. Uh, but Sarah is the only woman that God ever changed her name. That's huge. All right? So what does it mean? Now, there are many men that God changes their names. But what does it mean when God changes your name? Here's some life advice. When you get a new name, all right, you get a new destiny. With a new name, you get a new destiny. See, now your name may not have physically been changed, but when you became a Christian, that became part of your name. That's your new name. So you got a new destiny. Isn't that, isn't that some good life advice? <clears throat> Doesn't matter about all your faults and your failures and all the things that have done happened in the past. God, to, the trajectory of your life has changed and God has put you on a new course. And, and, and he didn't still say it was going to get better, but it's going to get better. He, he didn't say it's going to be great, but it's going to be great. You see, sometimes when things uh, uh, have been delayed, you see, uh, doesn't mean God is late. See, sometimes we deal with delays as, as God being late, but God may delay it, but he's never late. Are, are y'all walking with me here? And, and, and so, 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 so let me slow down. So look at the method God uses now. He, 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 he says to them now, he's given her a new name, and he tells Abram, he says, I'm going to change her name. That's the first thing, a new method. He changed her name, which means he's changing her direction. And there's a lot of controversy of what Sarai means, but there's no controversy on what the word Sarai Sarah means, and the word Sarah means princess. And, and so he's saying here that God is changing her name from being whether it means contentious or my princess, which means that she was uh, Abram's princess, to now she's God's princess. Oh, now, ladies, are y'all listening to me? If God changes your name and, and God is showing you some favor and, and, and God is on your side, see, God says, I got something planned for you. I know you done tried it your way. I know you done looked for your man in all the wrong places. I, I know you done had children you aren't supposed to have had. He said, but if you wait and do this my way. Uh, ah. Ah. Hmm. Look, 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 look at it now. Look at it. Look, look, look at it. He says for Sarah, he says that's going to be her name. And, and, and so what is he saying? Uh, here's some life advice. Uh, don't make the mistake of putting a time limit on God. Stop, stop, stop doing it. Stop talking about your body clock. Stop, talk, start, stop talking about your retirement plan. Stop talking about all the things that you have put a timetable on. How many of you put timetables on things time and time and time again, and it keeps coming up short, and God says, not yet. 
See, no doesn't mean no. It means sometimes it means not yet. And, and so, so, yeah, your life advice would be don't put a time limit on God. And I'm going to put an addition on that because God never forgets his promises or his people. Listen to me now. He never forgets his promises or his people. You got to just know that even when the days look very dark and dreary, even when you're going through and you just don't know how you're going to get through, sometimes you just need to hold on to God's unchanging hand, knowing that he said, Lo, I am with you as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You, can, you don't need to, need to fear any evil, for God says, I am with you. Ah, ah, ah. So, 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 ah. Hmm. Ah. So, so, so let's look at the mother that Sarah uh, is going to be. Uh, he says, now, I'm going to bless you, Abram. Change your name to Abraham. Change her name to Sarah. Now, watch this. He told Abraham in chapter 12 that he was going to be the father of many nations. He tells now Sarah. See, I guess Abraham said, well, God told me he didn't tell you. So maybe there was a little confusion in what they had heard from God. So God says, wait a minute, Abraham, I, Abraham I'm telling you, you're going to have uh, be the father of many nations, but I'm going to tell you who you're going to do it with. He said, yeah, Ishmael, yeah, I'm going to bless him, but he's not the one I'm going to do it with. He, he says there, there's one that, see, can, can I just talk plain and don't, don't get this twisted when I say this. See, Hagar was considered the, uh, a slave. She was owned by Abraham. Uh, are you with me here? And not in the kind of uh, uh, way that the, our culture did it. It wasn't in a mean and, and, and kind of way, but he owned her. She was property. So Ishmael is the son of a slave child. Uh, but Sarah, is the, her son is the son of the promised child. See, see, there's a difference when you see Abraham and Hagar had to work to make that work. Y'all ain't getting it. But over here with Sarah, no, she just had to wait for God to promise. And when God shows up and makes a promise, see, then you aren't doing any work. You're just walking in God's favor. You, you're just walking in what God has told you he's going to do for you. And you're just holding on, just knowing that God's going to show up at some time. I don't know when. But here God tells, now you've been waiting 24 years, but guess what? Next year this time, next year this time, something's going to be different. There's going to be a little boy running around the house. They both laughed at God. Have you ever laughed at God when God has told you to do something that just seems foolish and, and ridiculous and, and just doesn't make sense? You 75 years old, you 85 years old, now you're 99 years old. The brother said, man, you got to be out of your mind. God says, no, nothing. It's too hard for God. Are you listening to me? Sometimes we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. But the, here's the beautiful thing. Our, here, here's some life advice. Our future does not rest on our performance, but on God's promises. Did you hear what I just said? Our future does not rest on our performance, how, how well we do things or how well we don't do things. Our future rests on God's promises. So what does that mean? We have to take God at his word. That's where your faith has to kick in and be activated. It, it doesn't always have to make sense, but sometimes you have to make faith. Did you hear what I just said? Even when it doesn't make sense, you got to make faith. What, what, what does it making faith means. It means you are going to respond to God's word in the way that God said respond. The first thing that God told Abraham to do was to circumcise himself and everybody in the house. 99 years old. There's got to be another way to do this. <laughs> I'm just saying. Can't I just do everybody else in the house other than me? I mean, I'm 99. Ain't no need now. <laughs> Have we ever start trying to justify God's word? That, that may work for somebody else at this point in their lives, but, but not me. It's not that I don't believe you, God, that that's right, but I'm just saying. Have you ever just said, I'm just saying? I'm just saying. But God said, no, I'm just saying. See, see that, that's what he said. I'm just saying. 
And if you just listen to what I'm just saying, not what everybody else is saying, and not what the world is saying. See, we got too many voices in our head. We got too many people, too many things, too many cultures, too many, too many things telling us what we ought to be doing, telling us how we ought to live. But God says, you got to take me at my word, even when it looks crazy, even when it looks foolish, even when nobody says that it will work. I don't care what you hear. God says, this is the way I want you to go. This is what I want you to do. He says, you just keep walking with me. And he says, your future is not based on your performances, uh, but based on God's promises. And, and then guess what? Your faith, now check this out. When you start walking in faith, see, Abraham and Sarah weren't perfect people. And I'm not giving you a license to sin. But what I'm telling you here is that your faults and your failures uh, don't determine your future when you start walking in your faith, that your faith can lift you up higher and above and beyond your faults and your future. I don't care what mistakes you have made. I don't care what things you have done wrong. If you start taking God at his word right now, God take that spiritual eraser and start erasing all that stuff off your record and take care of all that stuff. He can wipe it all out. He can, he can just take that eraser and erase every mistake that you have made if you would just start taking him at his word right now. Right now. Today is an acceptable day. Regardless of what the rest of the culture says we ought to do. That's what all the prophets for all the years were telling them about a Messiah that was coming. God promised that he was going to bring a Messiah into the world. And Sarah is the first lineage of that promise. And she had a little boy, and his name is Isaac. And Isaac means he laughed. Sometimes God just laughs at us. But we can get an opportunity to laugh at the world when we do what God tells us to do and they're laughing at us. But you just give it enough time and God will show up and show out. I'll go back and tell you about the rest of my go-kart story. I was really mad at my father because I was only 13 years old and what he know, right? I mean, you 13, you know everything at 13. I knew so much, my daddy said, it's about, this is a good age for you to leave home now. <laughs> he said, because you know everything. That's when I realized I didn't know everything. Because when I started packing, he said, no, those clothes, those are mine. Those shoes, those are mine too. That key that you've been getting in and out of this house, that's his too. So I humble myself. Figure I better stay a few more years. But when I turned 16, my father took me to buy a car. Are you listening to me? He saw far beyond where I was. He didn't let me get caught up in, or he didn't get caught up in what I thought was right. And he helped me get more than a go-kart. And the car had brakes. <laughs> and a steering wheel, too. What am I trying to share with you? God is the same way. He knows when you're ready and what you're ready for. I didn't need a go-kart. I needed a car. Stop having go-kart faith. 
stop looking at what you want immediately and start taking God at his word even if you have to wait delayed but never late bow your heads with me